Hello and welcome to Module 2, Images and Media Files in Web Development for Graphic Communications. In this module, you'll learn how to differentiate between proper and improper file types for web development. This module is broken into two parts. The first part, you will be doing a file format homework assignment and you will be posting that assignment in the discussion forum under Discussion 2. In Discussion 2, after you post or once you post your three different image formats, you are going to comment on a peer's post and also comment on the video or reading for this week. There's a second assignment, Homework 2, that is also due um, in part one, on, and that is the animated GIF or GIF, however you want to pronounce it, and that will be posted also in a discussion forum in discussion three. You will also be signing up with a partner or partners for your professional site, which is final project two in module nine. So go ahead, look over the peer posts and responses in discussion one to find one or two peers that you think would be a good fit and a good match to do a site on. Uh, you could do three people or two people. If you're going to do more than that, you can talk to me about that. I would say I, I wouldn't want you to do more than four people per group. And then go ahead and install the student VPN if you haven't already, if you're going to be using your personal computer off campus and maybe even on campus. If you're using your personal computer, you'll need the student VPN to connect your files once we get started in Dreamweaver. I'll go over part two um, later in another video, but just note that you are going to respond also to homework two in discussion three. Uh, you have a little more time to respond to a peer and do some game activities. That's part two. You'll also be finalizing your professional site group topic in part two. So there's some activities we're doing in part, uh, part one in, in module two that'll be actually due in module three. So I'll go over the directions more thoroughly, but they are also all linked on the assignment sheets on the course page. First, I want to talk a little bit about image pixels and image size. If you've taken Digital Media Composition 1 with me, you may have heard this before and seen some of these slides. You look at this picture, for example, this was an image I just took with my smartphone, it was, so it was captured automatically at 72 ppi and that would make it a raster image which is just a pixel based image and those are the type of images that you'll be using for um, most of your images or files in your web pages even if it is a black and white image that looks like it could be a vector art, if it is made up of pixels, it is raster. So even uh, most of the line art that you'll see online, a lot of them that are available in free libraries, they look like they're vector images, but they're actually raster, such as this one, because it's made up of pixels. But what's the difference between a raster and a vector graphic? Vector graphics are composed of mathematical descriptions, lines, and points. They are not dependent on resolution, so they can be freely scaled. If you want to use a vector on a website or web page, you can only use SVG or scalable vector graphics. So you would have to convert, let's say, your Illustrator file to an SVG file. So you would have to save it to SVG so that it would be compatible for web. But most of you are going to be using raster images that are pixel based. And in the reading, you'll learn about some different file types that are raster based. Image resolution only affects the size of the image when printed. I'll show an example in Photoshop, but it doesn't really matter if you have an image that's 300 ppi pixels per inch or 100 ppi because they're going to look the same on the screen. It only matters when you print. They'll look different when you print it. The greater the pixels per inch, the greater the print quality. So that's where it really matters. You want to have a larger ppi if you're going to print. So in this class, we're not worried about printing, so we're just worried about 
the resolution that how it's going to look on the screen but also we're concerned about image size because that will affect the load time on your website so a simple equation to figure out a screen resolution is to measure your screen width in pixels and then the divide it by the width of the monitor or the screen height and that gives you your resolution so let's just do that real quick I'm going to look here on my Mac desktop under about this Mac and you can see here that if I go to displays my screen width in pixels is about 5000 and the width of my monitor is about 27 inches so if I plug those numbers into my calculator 5000 divided by 27 gives me about 150, uh, I'm sorry, 185 PI. So my screen resolution is about 185. So my images should be formatted about that size if I'm going to be viewing it on my monitor. But I want to think about the average monitor. May not, the res screen resolution may not be that high. Most of use, uh, students are probably using laptop computers that have a smaller screen size and smaller resolution. So I'm going to aim for about 100 as my target resolution for my images. If you read the article 72 PPI Myth, you'll see why all the default for the resolution is, de is defaulted to 72, but that's actually not accurate screen resolutions these days are higher so I'm just going to go with 100 just to be safe. I'm now in Photoshop and I am going to go in along with our theme of food here. I am going to select some images that I took this summer when I was in New York. I had some delicious Dominican food and I don't even remember what this dis dish was called but I think it was made of yucca and plantains or a combination. In any case, I'm going to open up the original image that I took on my iPhone. And when I take it with my iPhone, the default, if you look at image mode in Photoshop, is it's going to save it in RGB color space, which is what I want for web. So I want to use RGB, which is a larger color gamut, then say CMYK, which is what I would be using in print because we're limited in colors when we're printing. But with web, we have a lot more colors to work with. If we go to image size, then you can also take a look at the resolution. So it, the default is saving it to 70, uh, 72 PPI. And then I want to look at the pixels. So I want to think about my images and files and pixels when I'm working with web pages. So I'm going to leave the size as is for now. I can see here the image size is really big. It's 26 megabytes. I don't want to upload 20, a 26 megabyte file for my website. So I am going to change that. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and save this in a web friendly format. Right now, it is not a web friendly format. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And if you do the reading, John Duckett that's found on the course page in module 2 reading from HTML and CSS design and build websites you can find out what some of those uh, formats are I'm gonna save this file onto my computer and I'm going to rename this and I want to select JPEG as a format so that's one of the file formats that I can use for web so I'm gonna do three different formats the first one is JPEG and I want to save all of these in the same folder. And I want to go back and open the original file. My original file that was taken from my iPhone is this hike or H-E-I-C version. So I'm going to open that one. Make sure that you, you always save off from your original file. So then from the original one, I'm going to go to File, Save As again. And this time I'm going to save it as a different web format. I'm going to select GIF or GIF this time and just click OK and then again I want to open up my original image and from the original image go to File Save As and I'm going to save it as another web format and that's PNG. Now I have three different web formats 
And I can view these three images simultaneously if I go to Window, Arrange, and then I can select three up verticals so that I can see them all at the same time. Now when we're looking at them all at the same time, let's go back and think about the pixel sizes and we were talking about it really doesn't matter the pixel size. So right now they're all the same uh, pixel size. It's all 72 ppi at this point and they're all the same size. But let's say I want to change that. So I'm going to go to uh, my JPEG version and I'm going to go to image size and let's say I want to change the resolution so that it's higher. So I want to uncheck resample and instead of 72 I'm going to type in 600 ppi. You want to uncheck resample because if you check resample and you make the resolution bigger it's going to make the whole image larger in dimension. When, what it's doing is just it's just going to interpolate or add pixels that aren't there to try to mimic the pixel surrounding pixels and it's not going to look realistic and it's going to get all funky. So you want to make sure that you uncheck resample. If you're going to increase the resolution then you're going to decrease the dimensions, the width and the height. And I'm going to switch, I'm going to go ahead, go back and check resample now that I've already changed my resolution so that I can switch back to pixels. So I am at 3000 pixels now and my resolution is 600. So I'm going to open up a version with the same image saved at 72 ppi than this one that I just saved at 600 ppi. And I'm going to try to view them on the screen at about the same size. So because they're different pixels per inch, it's not going to match exactly. But looking at them on the screen, you're not going to notice much difference in resolution. Because remember, the screen resolution is about, for my screen, is about 180 ppi. And they're really going to look both look about 180 ppi on my screen. So they're not going to look any different in resolution. However, if you look at the size, I'm going to go ahead and close the this one, and then if we go back and look and see where I've got these saved, let's compare the one that's saved at 600 to the one that's saved at 72. So you can see the size here at 72 is 264 kilobytes. The one that's saved at 600 ppi is 3.3 megabytes. So it, the size is considerably larger and the one that's lower resolution, but on the screen they both look the same. So you don't need to upload an image at 600 ppi because it's going to look the same on screen when you upload it to your web server. So you want to really think about image size. If you can save image size, there's no point in uploading a file at, at 3 megabytes if you can upload it at 1 megabyte because you can save space on your server and it'll be quicker load time. So if it's going to look the same on the screen, right, you're unnecessarily saving at a larger image size and pixel size. So that's something you need to just start thinking about with web. It's different from print. So I'm going to close this one and then I'm going to bring up the three different versions that we saved. So we remember we saved the GIF the JPEG and the PNG. So let's take a look at those again. At first glance, they look pretty much the same, right? But if you look more closely, you'll notice the color is different. And colors on screens are not always accurate, but you will notice a difference if you look closely at the GIF and at the JPEG and PNG. There is a color shift you'll notice that the yellow is not as vibrant in the GIF and if I zoom in you can see this banding start to happen where there is not this gradual shift in tones from the different tones of yellow. If we look at that one more closely there is more variation in the yellows and then if we look at the PNG we also get more of those tones in the yellows than in the GIF where you can see it's starting to band around these yellow tones. Now something else that I can do 
and that you can do in Photoshop is we can look at the color gamut. If you go to view and select gamut warning, uh, what the gamut warning is, is it shows you what colors you, you would lose if you were going to print this. So with web, it's, it doesn't matter as much, but just so you can see the difference here. So if I go to my JPEG and look at the gamut warning, if I were to print this out, I would lose all these gray areas, all those rich tones in the gray areas. And then let's look at the GIF version. So what I want you to notice here is there's more gray, the gray area is larger on the GIF, which means that you would lose more colors. And even though we're not printing this, it just tells me that there is not as much variety in color in my GIF as there are in the JPEG and PNG. So that's important to note. But those are some differences in these different formats. And now I want to save these three different formats. Instead of at 72 ppi, I'm going to save them at 100 ppi, and I want to make it a little bit smaller in size so that I can prepare it for web and have quicker load time. I'm going to start here on my PNG and go to image size. Now I'm going to uncheck resample and I'm going to t uh, input 96 which is close to 100 rather than 72. Then I'm going to check resample again so I can view the size in pixels. I don't need 3000 pixels in width and height for this image. So if you think about the average screen size is about 1000 or 1200 pixels in width. Laptops it might be even smaller than that or tablets. Uh, but I'm just going to reduce that by about half and say I'm going to go to 600 pixels, 100, or let's just do, I'm going to do 550. So I'm going to do 550 pixels at 96 pixels per inch. That is a pretty good size for web. So I'm going to click OK, and then I can save that. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing with the JPEG. Uncheck resample, change it to 96 ppi, check resample again so I can view the pixels and I want the pixel size to be the same for all of my images so I'm going to type in 550 save that one and then the same with my GIF and if you prefer to say GIF go right ahead I've had students get mad at me for saying GIF so whatever you want to call it is fine with me Now I've saved all of these in the three different formats. I am ready to upload and submit it. So I'm on module two, um, as you learn, and I want to go to the start here page and make sure that you're following along with all the instructions. I'm going to go to homework one, file formats. This is the instruction sheet. So this is linked to the 72 PPI myth article and then the HTML and CSS reading. Uh, these are written instructions, there's an example, and here is the rubric. So just take a look at that to make sure you're following this. Before you post and submit, make sure that your three images are properly labeled and formatted correctly. So if they're really large and you did not resize them, and I can't see all three of them on the screen, then you did not format it correctly. So make sure you're formatting it correctly for web. I'm going to click on Discussion to Video Response. That's where you need to submit. So you will add a new discussion topic. Before you post here, click on the arrow on the left, and that gives you some more options. So here I can select the table, and I want two rows and three columns. I want two rows because I want to have a row for my caption, and then I want to have a column for each image. And I don't want a border. So I'm going to select Create Table and put my cursor in the top left cell. That's where I want to upload my first image. So then I'm going to go to, my, to the folder where I have the images saved. And the first one, um, I'm going to go with my JPEG here and just drag and drop that into that first cell. Okay, then I'm going to move my cursor into the second cell and drag and drop my GIF in there and put my cursor in the third cell and drag and drop my PNG in there. Then I can scroll down to the second row and type in 
the format. So don't forget the order. So make sure you've got the right one underneath the right the right label for the right image. So the first one was the JPEG. And I'm going to center that with my text formatting. Then the next one was the GIF and then the PNG. So then I've got these three images labeled. Now if I scroll up, make sure you read the directions again. So what I want you to do in addition to posting these three images with the labels is to comment on either the video or the article. So you can submit your comment here about the video or, or uh, video, video or reading, or you can submit your comment on a response to a peer's post. So you're going to choose one of your peers to respond to and tell them which format you think is most appropriate for the image selected. So I'll show you an example of that. So I'm going to call the subject here instructor sample. I'm going to include a comment here on either the video or the article. So if I click on this, I can see the three images that are labeled correctly and a comment here on the video or the article. And then you can choose someone to respond to. So in the response, I'm going to go back up here to the instructions. You want to comment on another student's post by identifying which format you think is most appropriate for the image, for the type of image. So think about, is the image a photograph? Is it artwork? Does it have a lot of colors? That sort of thing. So then you'll respond. So I'll say reply. And then I'm going to respond by identifying which format is best for this type of image. So this is based on what you learn from the reading. So that's your peer response here. So you can respond to somebody's post. And that concludes part one in module two. In the next video, we'll go on to part two. So before you do that, you can also watch this beginning graphic design video on images. And then you can watch my updated video for part two animated GIF assignment.